Ignite to Impact. You're listening to Ignite to Impact, a podcast to educate and inspire positive, meaningful change within ourselves and in others. I'm Dr. Geneva. How are you? I'm a leadership coach, author, and the Vibrant Life Architect, helping women over 50 design their next best life. You know, we sit down with influencers to find out how they do what they do to make an impact, to make a difference. Today, I want to let you in on, I want you to listen to a story of courage, perseverance, and style. So now you may ask me, well, what does courage and perseverance have to do with style? And when I say style, I, yeah, I'm talking fashion and how you look and how you feel good. Well, I have as my guest, Veronica Hood, entrepreneur, owner of Rolani's Boutique, and a woman who is just has God's favor through hard work and a commitment to excellence in customer service. She'll share with you how she has impacted others and has changed lives through courage, perseverance, and style. Good morning, Veronica. How are you? I am wonderful. How are you, Dr. Geneva? I am just so delighted you are here and looking fabulous. Thank you. And I want to, you know, when we talk about courage, perseverance, and style, mm-hmm. what does that mean? It means a lot of things, really. It means, uh, from the courage standpoint, it means being willing to step out and do whatever it is you desire to do without fear of failure. Um, and, and perseverance means that no matter what, you just keep pushing through because mm-hmm. there will be obstacles. Mm-hmm. Um, but the perseverance is no matter what, I'm going to get this done. Okay, so mm-hmm. what is it in your life that you got done? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've, I've gotten done a lot of things. Um, you mentioned earlier about the fashion aspect. Well, I've been uh, an entrepreneur pretty much my entire life. Okay. Um, I've, I worked a few jobs early on, but I knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, uh, I was laughing because my, my friends, who some of them I've known all my life, they said, mm-hmm. Veronica, you've always been an entrepreneur. Uh, why do they say that? Because as a child, okay. I was always selling something. Or, mm-hmm. you know, I used okay. to braid hair to make a few dollars. Mm-hmm. I used to have jack tournaments on my front porch okay. to, you know, to make uh, money. Oh, you play jacks? I play jacks, oh, yes. I love me some jacks. Yes. And I, you know, it's funny, when I talk about mm-hmm. playing jacks to my children or mention it to my they friends, they like, have not a clue. Not a clue, what's what that? I'm talking, right. <laughs> jacks. But I love jacks, so you mm-hmm. would have tournaments. I would. Uh, playing jacks. Playing jacks. Okay. On my front porch, okay. I had my mom fry, fry fish and I'd sell mm-hmm. fish dinners. Mm-hmm. I've just always had an entrepreneur spirit. Mm-hmm. Why do you think that is you know I think God gifts people with things and I think that's my gift Mm -hmm. to be an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so how did you take that how did you move this entrepreneurial gift that you have how did you move that in so so you did it with jacks and fish fries and uh selling things so what was your next entrepreneurial venture well I uh many many years ago um I used to make gift baskets Mm-hmm. Uh, that's kind of what really got me started in, in a bigger, you know, onto a bigger journey. I used to see people out during Mother's Day and Easter selling these baskets, and I thought I can do that. Okay. And so, um, because I'm very creative, mm-hmm. uh, I started making these beautiful baskets, and I would set up my little stand, mm-hmm. um, and I would sell hundreds of dollars worth of baskets you know over the course of a weekend and so I did that and then from there um, I am also a jewelry designer Mm -hmm. I did that as a hobby for a number of years Um, and it just got to the point where I made so much jewelry I needed to do something with it Mm -hmm. and I thought okay how am I going to get rid of some of this jewelry and I always uh, admire Mary Kay Mm -hmm. for how she built her business from the ground and how she incorporated other women giving them Mm -hmm. an opportunity to have their own business Mm -hmm. and I thought okay that's a really good concept let me incorporate that into my next phase Mm -hmm. and so I started personally doing home parties and developing my program for that how that worked in terms of the commission for the person who hosted the party, 
creating invitations for her to put out brochures for her to understand what the party was going to be about and what was expected of her. And uh, so I did that for a number of years. Mm. And then I began to uh, recruit women. Okay. To be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And so at one point in time, I had 10 ladies who did the same thing. So they went out and I provided jewelry for them and and, um, they went out and they sold jewelry. And and this was jewelry that you made? Some of it was jewelry that I made, Okay, but it got so big I had to start buying things wholesale. Oh, right. Well, that's good. You grew it. Yeah, I grew it. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, from there, um, from the party plan, it got to a point where people were asking, do you have belts? Do you have purses? Do you have Mm -hmm. this and that? And I thought I kept bringing all these things in and the boxes got heavier and Mm -hmm. heavier and it was more and more stuff. Uh And I thought, okay, well, I've developed a following because I I always encourage people, whatever you do, create a list so that you can reach back out to those people who have dealt with you in the past. Mm -hmm. And finally, the opportunity came for me to open my own store. And I've had several different stores Mm -hmm. over the years. Uh, My first store was actually in the, what used to be called the Tower Center Mall Mm -hmm. in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And it was a new mall and a lot of African-American entrepreneurs in there. So I was excited to be Mm -hmm. a part of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I opened a baby guest store. Oh, okay. A baby... Baby guest clothing. Oh, baby guest clothing. Baby okay. guest clothing. Okay, so why baby guest clothing after jewelry and fish fries? <laughs> well, I went into a partnership Okay. Oh, I with see. someone, okay. and mm-hmm. that was what he suggested. He, mm-hmm. he said, you know, people love the brand name things for absolutely. their babies, yeah. and so let's do a baby guest store. Mm-hmm. And he was absolutely right. Okay. We could not keep the clothing in the store. I mean... They bought it so fast. Mm -hmm. It was just unbelievable Mm -hmm. the money that people would spend Mm -hmm. on babies' clothing. Mm -hmm. And so from there, when when that partnership uh, dissolved, I opened my own store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've had a couple of stores since then, and Mm -hmm. here I am, 23 years later. Yes, (laughs) yes. So you, from a young age, Mm -hmm. have have had that entrepreneurial spirit, Mm -hmm. that itch, that drive Mm -hmm. to do. What have you learned? during this entrepreneurial process, adventure? Well, I've learned that people want quality. Okay. Uh, Quality is very important for sustainability. I've learned that you have to understand that you need to give a little something extra. So I've always thought, what can I offer to my customers that they're not going to get when they go to another boutique. Okay. And so, and I've also learned that integrity and honesty is extremely important. Mm -hmm. So for an example, in my store, I will never attempt to sell someone something that is not good for them. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm not just there to make the sale. My goal Mm -hmm. is to make you feel good. I Mm -hmm. want you to know when you leave my store and I've dressed you that Mm -hmm. you're 100. Okay. So that's the most important thing to me because I believe that when you offer that type of service, you develop a clientele that's loyal to you Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, because they trust you and trust is extremely important. Mm -hmm. So, you know, based on that, um, I've been able to sustain my business for uh, coming up on 23 years Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and my customers, they trust me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it works. You know, that is so important because I know when I go, sometimes I go, I'll go. i go into stores, mm-hmm. uh, fashion stores, you know, want to get something to wear. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, you know, you want to look good and and you want input mm-hmm. and you want to get some, you want to ask people, well, Absolutely. you know, how does this look? And, and particularly going into a boutique mm-hmm. and you don't want to hear BS. Right. I mean, you want to. At least for me, I want to get the truth of the matter. Absolutely. Because I want to know. And I don't want the boutique owner or the salespeople to sell me something just to make a sale. Right. I want them to, you know, help me look good. So I can, and I will go back to those places where I feel I'm getting Mm -hmm. honest input. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And that's and that, how your customers that uh, is the see key. you. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. They know mm-hmm. that I'm going to tell them t- the truth. And I'll suggest other things. Like I'll have people, you know, they want to try on things. And, you know, I will gently say, you know, I don't know. Let's try this okay. instead of that. I think mm-hmm. this might be better for you. And okay. I've become very good at determining what styles are best for women. Because mm-hmm. I've been doing it for so long. People ask, how did you know that would look nice on me? Mm-hmm. You know, after 23 years, you figure it out, Mm -hmm, you know, and so I'm able to make suggestions to people and I try to gently 
pull people out of their comfort zone in the style category because women mm-hmm. tend to get into a rut. Okay. And they wear the same style, the same kind of thing. And I like to say, let's experiment a little bit. Mm-hmm. Let's try this style of skirt okay. or that style of blouse and see how you like it. Okay. You know, and gently and and typically they like it. Mm-hmm. And especially when they go out and they get all these compliments. Okay. Then right. they really like That's it. That's right. <laughs> right. And I know they come back then. Then they come back. Right. Girl, I can't I got so many compliments <laughs> on that or this. And I'm like, I, mm-hmm. I knew you would. Right. You know. So so working with style over the years, what things <clears throat> have changed in terms of style Mm -hmm. and fashion in black women? Well, you know, I think black women have a bit more confidence now. Um, We used to think that we had to dress a certain way. We had to tone it down. But I think women have gotten more bold in their style. And in my store, excuse me, I'm not uh, one that pushes a lot of trendy clothing because I believe in building a wardrobe. And so I, you know, I recommend that you definitely have several pair of black slacks, Mm a couple of different lengths of skirts, different styles of skirts. And so as long as she has those staple items Mm -hmm. in her wardrobe, Mm -hmm. then we can incorporate the fashion pieces. Mm -hmm. And for me, fashion hasn't, because I'm not a trend person, um, I don't follow trends because Mm -hmm. that's not my niche. My Mm -hmm. niche is class and sophistication and sustainability in the wardrobe. So for me, it's, quality Mm -hmm. um is it going to be something you can wear five ten years from now Mm -hmm. in fact i had a customer in my store about a month or so ago and she said veronica she said girl i am still wearing an outfit i bought from you 15 years ago (laughs) and i'm still getting compliments Uh on it Uh and i said well you know Mm -hmm. that's what we're all about Mm -hmm. yeah so i don't even encourage my customers to worry about what the latest trend is Mm -hmm. just look good and wear and do you Mm -hmm. don't let society tell you what you have to wear because flowers are in or high lows are in or Mm -hmm. what looks good on you because just because they make it doesn't mean it's for you Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so so in terms of women over 50 Mm -hmm. okay so I want to kind of explore that a little more um, particularly since um, you have gone from stylist well really entrepreneur stylist um, and now beauty pageant director. Yes. So I really want to talk about that journey okay. and, and how you went from the Jack's tor- tournament and the fish fries mm-hmm. to being a successful boutique and being uh, uh, recognized and respected mm-hmm. as a stylist to a beauty pageant owner. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that journey. Well, you know, Dr. Neva, um, Dr. Geneva, I have, having been in business as long as I have, I've had the pleasure of really uh, observing the aging process in many of my mm. customers because I have customers that have been with me literally from the beginning. And in watching that, I see some women who are just, I mean, defying the myths of aging in every way. They look good. They still are vibrant. They're active and they're doing things. And then I see women who are not. uh, But I thought, you know, what? wow, these women are gorgeous. I have women that come in and and I always ask, you know, especially if I look at her and she's beautiful. I said, do you mind if I ask you how old you are? Mm -hmm. And she'll tell me and I would say, what is your secret? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you what have you done that has kept you looking so fabulous? And so after, you know, a couple years of that, I thought, you know what, wouldn't it be great to create something to showcase this beauty and to be an inspiration to other women to say, you know what, maybe I do need to do a little bit more for myself. Mm -hmm. And so I prayed about it and I said, God, how can I do that? You know, what, what, what can I do to bring this up? And beauty pageant came into my mind Mm, and I thought, nah, Mm -hmm. mm mm-mm. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about a beauty pageant. Mm-hmm. I, have, mm-hmm. I haven't been in a beauty pageant, haven't been to a beauty pageant, mm-hmm. don't know anything about it, really. Mm-hmm. And so I really literally sat on it for almost 10 years. Oh, okay. I really did because okay. I felt like, Mm-mm, that couldn't mm-hmm. be it. And then it okay. sort of popped out of my mind and I would do different things like we do um, a women's group meeting, which we'll talk about that. But finally, it just would not rest mm-hmm. in my spirit. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay. I'm and so what made this. it pop out? Was there something that occurred or something happened or a thought that went through your mind not, or just a woman seeing, who walked in the store and you said, hey, I got to do it? Not particularly, but I just seeing them overall, you know, mm-hmm. continuing to see these beautiful mm-hmm. women and feeling like, 
you know, wow. Just okay. I was just in awe of so many of them. Yes. And then it was like, okay, I got to do that beauty okay. pageant. All right. I'm going to do that beauty pageant. So fabulous. And so it now is the Miss Black Fit and Fine uh, yes. beauty pageant, yes. uh, first of its kind yes. in the country. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't exist. Nothing like it exists no. in, 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 in the world. No. I mean, we might as well take it where, take it, where it is. There it is. Um, yeah, because... And, go ahead. It, it, yes, please. It's a demographic of women who tend to be forgotten. Okay. You know, and uh, that's the women over 50. The women over 50, 60, 70. People don't tend to look to them. Mm -hmm. They look to the young, cute, you know, younger, Mm -hmm. sexy, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they don't tend to look at the beauty of women who are who have aged gracefully. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the Miss Black Fit and Fine Beauty Pageant is really about. It's about showcasing that that grace, that beauty and even that fitness. Yeah, because you see women nowadays, the the grandmas today aren't the grandmas of yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, okay. We're going to do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. And so now I I love what you said about uh, how you, through your stores Mm -hmm. uh, and your boutiques, you were, as women came in, you were able to observe the aging process. And and when you saw the beauty and the grace and the fitness, uh, you would ask, what's your secret? Mm -hmm. What did these women tell you? Some of their secrets. Some of their secrets. One is I don't let people stress me. Mm. And that's the one that I've adopted. It's like they don't do stress. um, That they get their rest. They don't burn the candle at both ends. They get their rest. I thought, okay, that's important. And they watch what they eat. Mm-hmm. You know, they're very conscious of the foods that they intake, the drinks that they have, and they just basically, you know, try to stay active. Mm-hmm. You know, sitting mm-hmm. around doing nothing. <gasps> sitting around doing. Are we good? Sitting around doing nothing, you know, it kind of speeds up the aging process. So mm-hmm. they, they try to stay active. And I thought, okay. So I started to incorporate all of those things into my own life. I'm like, okay, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use all of that. So, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're just joining us, it's, it's my pleasure and delight to be talking to Veronica Hood, entrepreneur, a stylist founder director of the Miss Black Fit and Fine beauty pageant the only pageant of its kind in the world that celebrates and showcases women over 50 as they age gracefully beautifully and with fitness okay Mm -hmm. and I do want to disclose okay (laughs) to my to my listeners that I am the reigning Miss Black Fit and Fine beauty queen yes Yes, I am. And, I, you know, I want to tell you, because, you know, my listeners, my listeners, Veronica, know that mm-hmm. I just celebrated my 70th birthday. Yay. And that um, when I became a part of this pageant, uh, it was an incredible experience. There were women there who clearly were much younger than me, uh, mm-hmm. certainly uh, were uh, much more uh, slender than me. Um, and uh, between all of it, though, I won. And it was mm-hmm. a phenomenal experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we didn't have bathing suits. Now, I need to no. tell you. Now, Mm-mm. I could have competed if we had a bathing suit. Now, I'm going to tell you. I could have been right up on out there and kicked my leg all up right there. Now. Okay. With my hands on my hips. Hello. But I didn't. <laughs> um, but we did have a um, opportunity to show our fitness yes. uh, and uh, we did talent I did the spoke a spoken word and a fabulous spoken uh, word thank you that. and <laughs> we had to respond to questions from uh, judges and we modeled and sh- showed ourselves off in gowns mm-hmm. and so it was absolutely incredible and and Veronica I you know it was such a life-changing experience for me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and as you talk Talk about women who give you secrets about aging gracefully, and one of them is don't sit around doing nothing. Right. This clearly was one of those things to do. Mm-hmm. So, how do how does it make you feel to mm-hmm. have created something that impacts mm-hmm. and influences women mm-hmm. uh, to live vibrantly mm-hmm. so much? How does that feel? <laughs> 
You know, let me first say it feels great that God chose me uh, because I feel like it's it's something that he gave me to do. Um, and it, it I feel honored. Mm-hmm. You know, I really mm-hmm. honestly feel honored and humbled mm-hmm. to be able to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's even more of a joy to me when I talk to the contestants who are so excited mm-hmm. about being a part of it. And I talk to people who say, you know, this is inspirational. I've lost mm-hmm. 15 pounds, mm-hmm. you know, and I see that it's impacting women's lives and it's doing exactly what it was designed to do. That that's that brings tears to my eyes, mm-hmm. literally, because that's mm-hmm. that's what it's all about. So what does the next chapter look like for Veronica Hood. I mean, again, <laughs> entrepreneur, stylist, beauty pageant director. Uh, where are you taking all this and this um, this interest, this profound interest in mm-hmm. um, showcasing women mm-hmm. in uh, various uh, stages of, you know, looking and being well? Mm-hmm. Well, you know what, Dr. Judy, I would like to see it grow. Um, because I feel it's a phenomenal opportunity for women. Um, and I would really love to see it travel and go to different cities, perhaps mm-hmm. even franchise the pageant at some point, mm-hmm. because it's great and it should not just be limited to this city. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really want to uh, develop it more to be able to take it on the road and let other women be a part of it and maybe even make it a national pageant at some mm-hmm. point in time. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when 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 you think about beauty pageants, mm-hmm. um Most people think about, you know, the swimsuits Mm -hmm. and um, certainly at this point in time, we're just so honored to have so many black women who are now carrying Mm -hmm. uh, titles, beauty pageant titles. Your pageant is totally different, though, because your whole focus Mm -hmm. is on health and wellness. Health and wellness. So how do you use... uh, the beauty pageant Mm -hmm. to do health and wellness? Well, we try to provide resources for people um, because I am a firm believer in alternatives to traditional medication. Mm -hmm. I do not believe um, that we need to pump ourselves full of of, a bunch of medication. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe that God created this body perfect in every way Mm -hmm. and he did not forget to create what it needs. Mm -hmm. And so I try to encourage people to seek out natural herbal solutions okay. to the things that that trouble them because mm-hmm. there are solutions other than medication that will help you get through things and even at the pageant we have vendors mm-hmm. and we seek out vendors who can provide those resources mm-hmm. whether it be training or food sources vitamins whatever uh, we try to have those people available at the beauty pageant so that you can get that we also post health tips Mm -hmm. on our Facebook page um, just to share you know did you think about this did you Mm -hmm. know that because Mm -hmm. there are a lot of little things Mm -hmm. that people you just don't think about every day like for an example we should never ever use styrofoam anything okay cups plates Styrofoam should never be used, and especially in a microwave, because when it's heated to a certain level, it emits a toxic chemical that causes cancer in the body. Mm -hmm. We should never use bleach because Mm -hmm. bleach causes cancer in the body. Mm -hmm. So there are little things that people, you know, we do it every day. Mm -hmm. We don't think twice about it, but they're harming our bodies Mm -hmm. silently. And one of the other things that you sponsor is a series of girl talks. Yes. And again, focused on the health and wellness and and the whole woman the the real girl talk meeting is something that um i started about three years ago and we hold a a monthly meeting it's at my boutique and the women come and the beauty of it is they have the opportunity to submit questions anonymously Mm -hmm. so for an example if they have an issue that they're dealing with they can write it down put it in the basket and i present that question to the group and they're able to get feedback from a diverse group of women about how to handle that situation Mm -hmm. and so there i mean we talk about everything from a to z Mm -hmm. and it's really great because sometimes you need help with things that you're dealing with and you don't want to tell your girlfriend Mm -hmm. and you don't want to tell your mama or whoever but you need help with that Mm -hmm. and so this is an opportunity for them to get that help Mm -hmm. you know one of the things that i think is so important um for entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. And, and you're a, a, just a living example of it is, of course, as an entrepreneur, you, you know, you got a business, you want to make the dollar, you want to serve your customers. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
and there's also room mm-hmm. for uh, making a difference in the community mm-hmm. or focusing on an issue. Mm-hmm. Um, but oftentimes, entrepreneurs don't know how to do that because mm-hmm. they're so busy, particularly solopreneurs. Mm-hmm. They've got so much to do yeah. uh, so to, in keeping their business alive. Mm-hmm. How are you able to manage being an entrepreneur mm-hmm. and fulfilling this um, dream purpose that you mm-hmm. have, which is bringing health and wellness, mm-hmm. creating this platform for mm-hmm. health and wellness for black women. Mm-hmm. I'll say it real simple. Teamwork makes the dream work. Okay. And there's no way I could ever do all that I do by myself. And so I know my lane, I know my strengths, I know my weaknesses. Mm-hmm. And I will bring in people that will help me with the things that I'm simply not good at. Mm-hmm. And so if you were to encourage uh, or make uh, give some tips mm-hmm. to entrepreneurs about how they can also provide platforms for issues that are important to women. What would be some of the things that you would suggest to them to do? Well, first search your heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it that you have a passion for? And then try to figure out how you can use that passion to make a difference in other people's lives. And you may need to talk to people about how, how do you think I could use this? It's always good to get the advice of wise counsel. Mm-hmm. You know, I always suggest to people, share your idea with someone, not everyone, but someone who you trust their opinion, you trust their background, and they can assist you with pulling it all together. Mm-hmm. Yep. So this has just been a phenomenal conversation, uh, Veronica. I particularly, um, enjoyed hearing about the secrets Mm -hmm. that years of you serving and working with and advising women Mm -hmm. have said to you about the whole aging process and and what you should do about what you eat uh get plenty of rest uh don't do stress those kinds yes Mm -hmm. those are really great great tips. Now, is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience uh, generally about health and wellness, black women, or something that you might want to say about the pageant? Well, you know, I just want to encourage women to love yourself. Stop beating up on yourself. Work with what you have. If you don't like it, change it because you can. And I just encourage people to remove the toxins from your body, whether they be food, people, situations, whatever it is that's toxic to you in your life, get rid of it because some people are in your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. You have to determine which one they are. And it's no, nothing wrong with getting rid of that friend that's been your friend for 20 years if she becomes toxic to your life. And just do your dream. Don't be afraid to step out on faith and trust God in your walk and pray for advice. And just do what you desire to do. Don't be afraid. Do your dream. Do your dream. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. So when, when we say to Veronica Hood, uh, do your dream. Do your dream. You are doing. And, do, and don't dream. be afraid okay. to fail because yes. you may fail. Just okay. get back up and keep going. Okay. And and we here on Ignite to Impact understand a lot about failures. In mm-hmm. fact, we like to talk about failures because we recognize that without those failures, you don't learn. You can't mm-hmm. move out of your comfort zone. Um, you can't learn, uh, and that's where learning happens. That's where, that's happens. where success happens, oh, yeah. outside the comfort There's zone. There's great learning and hardship. Yes, <laughs> indeed. And I'm going to tell you, I learned a lot when uh, I stepped out on that stage uh, for my first time ever beauty pageant and had to face all of these folks. And you were fabulous. Absolutely. I stepped out of my comfort zone, and I grew a lot with that. Mm-hmm. Veronica Hood, we are so delighted to have you um, entrepreneur, stylist, uh, beauty pageant director, but but more than a beauty pageant director, really a woman, a leader who creates platforms for women to uh, be observed as they age wonderfully uh, and, and giving us that opportunity to Uh, understand that showcasing beauty uh, can in fact be done. Thank you for your story of courage, perseverance, and style. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. Ignite to impact.